welcome everyone today we are going to start a new nptel online certification course on biological process design for wastewater treatment so in today's lecture we are going to study the importance of this subject as well as the importance of water treatment as well as wastewater treatment in today's scenario we are going to understand the course structure as well as the books and the reference book that will be given in the later so let us start the introductory later uh, lecture today itself now we understand the need of water and wastewater treatment has increased in today's society the reason is that we require water for various uses and these uses include in the domestic as well as in the industrial sector now if we require the water that water has to be supplied from some source so the source of water which is generally used includes river lake and ponds ground water etc and now these sources when their characteristics are getting altered we need to uh, treat these water before their probable use in the domestic as well as in the industrial sector along with the agricultural uses as well now depending upon the uses that we do in our domestic or industrial sector lot of pollutants get added to these water when the uses is being done of the water and these the generation of these water after their uses has lot of characteristics which get altered before their uses so that means Uh, we generate lot of municipal and industrial waste water which have entirely different characteristics as compared to before they enter into the respective domestic place or industrial place so that means the altered characteristics have some problem and we need to treat the waste water also before further uses are discharged into aquatic bodies so we have different entirely different strategies for water and waste water treatment and that depends upon the uses of the water source of the water etc now let us understand this with a pictorial diagram and study understand the difference between water treatment and waste water treatment suppose we have a river which is flowing okay a near to vicinity of a city and this river is flowing and we have some colony or a city which is there uh, near to this river now this city or colony will require water for its uses now what are the sources one of the source is this river which is there now this river can be one of the source there could be other source is like a lake or reservoir is there and that could be another source of water for this city or this community so this may be a lake a pond or any other reservoir there could be other sources also that a ground water is there and ground water can be used as a source of water now if the water in this sources is not good enough for direct use in the city and the city uses may be for domestic purpose for drinking etc and the water quality if is it is not there it may be for drinking bathing okay for agriculture some of these uh, uses may be there now if the water quality is not good enough from any of these sources what we will have to do is that we have to use a water we have to do the water treatment before using this water in in this city so the river water will come in this water treatment plant and it will be further going into this city or similarly for lake also we have to treat and similarly for ground water also we have to do the treatment the water treatment done here may be of different size Uh, like if we are taking ground water and ground water is being stored in the water tanks in the community so the water treatment done there will be of lower level 
Similarly, if groundwater is directly going into a home, so they may be having a small treatment unit which will be of the size of maybe 1 meter is cube etcetera or much lower than that and then the water is being used in that particular home. So, the water treatment done before uses in the domestic is may vary depending upon the size of the community from where it is taken and the within the water treatment plant or water treatment unit the different units that will be there in the treatment will also depend upon the characteristic of the water from where it is being taken and how much water is being taken. Now, similarly from all these sources there is a possibility that we have a industrial cluster or an industry is there. So, this industry will also require water for its uses. It may be like a power plant, this is a possible that this industry is a power plant or any of the chemical and process industries. So, uh, any of these industries will require lot of water and they for them the source of water may be this river itself okay, or this ground water or this lake or reservoir. So, any of these sources may be there. Now, depending upon the uses for the case like suppose power plant is there and we have to make electricity in the power plant. So, under that condition the hardness level in the water should be minimum possible. So, under that condition there will be again a water treatment will be done for any of these uh, un any of these water and then only it will be going into the industry. So, under that condition hardness has to be removed and that hardness removal can be done by a simple ion exchange unit etcetera. So, again for industry the if the industry is sugar industry or any other industry the treatment unit will be different. It will depend upon the industry and what type of water they require for their uses within the plant. Now, once the water has been used either in the city or for agriculture or in the industry after that uses lot of compounds and pollutants get dissolved into the water and water gets released. So, this water is called if it is being it is coming out of from the city. So, it will be called as municipal water. So, this under that conditions we will be generating a municipal waste water and then we have to treat this waste water in a waste water treatment plant that may be STP generally called as STP or sewage treatment plant. So, this sewage treatment plant may be there and we will have to treat this water. So, this and then it will be discharged may be into the river itself after treatment. So, this is possible. Similarly, from the industry we will be having some water which is getting generated and that water will be treated this is industrial waste water which is getting generated and that water has to be treated in a effluent treatment plant. So, this is commonly called as ETP or effluent treatment plant. So, this is uh, this water has to be treated here and then uh, it will be discharged or may be recycled back into the industry. Okay. If the unit is ZLD, ZLD means the zero liquid discharge unit. So, all the water after its uh, treatment has to be recycled back. So, this is called zero liquid discharge. If that industry is allowed to give water for agriculture uses like sugar industry, then that water will go into the fields where the it may be used for agriculture. Okay. And similarly, if, if it is possible for discharge of the water from this, so it will ultimately go into the river and ultimately it will be discharged. So, depending upon the final uses of the water after treatment in the industry recycling may be done, it may be discharged to the agriculture, it may be discharged uh, to any of the aquatic bodies. So, this type of treatment. So, there is a difference uh, that I wanted to highlight is that the water treatment and wastewater treatment is different. In the water treatment when the word is water treatment we try to treat the raw water which is obtained from either river, lake 
or pond or ground water for its probable use in the domestic or in the industrial sector. Then there is another term which is called as wastewater treatment. In the wastewater treatment, this is used for treatment of the municipal wastewater which is, which is discharged from a city or for treatment of industrial wastewater which is discharged from any industrial premises. So, these are the different terms. Now, uh, within this now we can learn few terms which are very important and before going further ahead and these terms are like uh, already I have told regarding STP. Okay. So, STP is sewage treatment plant which is for municipal waste water treatment. Similarly, we have ETP. Okay. Uh, ETP is for effluent treatment plant. Generally, the term is related to industrial waste water treatment. Then there is another uh, already learned one term is called JLD. JLD is uh, generally term for water treatment in those industries which are not allowed to discharge any water outside the premises. So, that means after treatment they will have to recycle back and use the water either in the process or for irrigation or for any other uses may be steam generation etcetera. So, JLD units are those which actually have to recycle back all water after treatment. Then there is another term which is called as CETP. So, CETP means common effluent treatment plant. So, common effluent common effluent treatment plant. Now, for common effluent treatment plant are used in those places where we have a special economic zones or an industrial cluster is there. So, that means suppose any industrial cluster is there and we have lot of small units which are there. So, what these units are ex expected to treat water up to a certain level and after that all industries will discharge water into a common effluent treatment plant which is called as CETP and which will ultimately treat the water discharge from each of the industrial premises. So, all these small industries will treat water only up to a certain level after that that will go into the CETP where the final treatment will done before the discharge of water into aquatic bodies. So, this is there. So, this, this is a very common term CETP. So, we learn uh, regarding water and waste water treatment and their difference. Now, further going ahead when the water is being used in any of the domestic cases as well as in the industry many pollutants are coming and new new types of pollutants are coming into picture. The traditional pollutants which were present in the water they included like heavy metals, dyes, organic pollutants, pesticides, insecticides etcetera. And we can understand that these are coming from maybe industrial sources or from maybe uses in the homes etcetera. So, we have municipal wastewater where lot of organic pollutant may be there uh, up to a certain level and uh, then agriculture from agriculture we have pesticide insecticide which is getting dissolved into the water and which is ultimately going into the pond or reservoir etcetera. So, uh, this is there. So, all these are traditional pollutants. Now, new type of emerging pollutants are coming into picture and uh, these contaminants and emerging pollutants they are basically being discharged because of the uses or certain types of compounds in our daily life. Now, pharmaceuticals lot nowadays we are using lot of pharmaceuticals in our homes and uh, in fact, there is over consumption of pharmaceuticals in our daily life and once they are used and they are over consumed. So, certainly they will go into the water also and in the sewage. Uh, so, they are ultimately going into the river. Similarly, we are using lot of personal care products in our day to day life and uh, once they are clean from our faces etcetera and when we are bathing. So, they are ultimately going into the water and these personal care products are causing lot of problem. Similarly, surfactant and detergents uh, are being used for cleaning clothes, uh, floors 
and uh, household things in and in the industries also they are being used. So, these things are also going into water. Many of these compounds are endocrine disruptors uh, and they cause lot of changes in our body uh, and uh, similarly in the industry lot of industrial additives and agents are going into the water bodies when the these industrial units uh, are being cleaned, their floors are being cleaned or their condensates are coming etcetera. Similarly, in fuels we are using lot of fuels and fuel additives are being used also in our day to day life and they are also going into the uh, water bodies. So, these emerging pollutants need to be removed from the water bodies if we have to take care of the our environment and if we have to use the water for various uses. So, uh, there is lot of challenges with respect to emerging uh, contaminants. Now, going further uh, there are many challenges which exist presently in our country and other countries as well and these uh, challenges I have discussed in two slides and uh, before going for understanding what is the designed in our course. So, we have lot of major challenges with respect to domestic wastewater treatment, domestic water treatment as well as the wa wastewater treatment in the next slide. So, in all those colonies which get developed with time and there is no plant planning for development of those colonies. So, this happens in our country a lot we purchase a plot then somebody else will purchase a plot will make a home there, but we do not have a any water discharge system or sewage discharge system and collection and treatment system. So, under those conditions what we do is that we have a septic tank in our homes and we have a condition where many homes small homes are built together where the water is being taken from the ground and in the same home maybe of 1500 square feet the septic system is also there where water is going again back into the ground may be leach. So, we require systems where zero leaching should be there that means there should be no leaching and a proper treatment may happen within the short residence time. So, this is very very important for our country in particular for unorganized uh, developed colonies and if this is not happening then the lot of water problem may happen and the ground water may get polluted. Similarly, we have lot of terrain where the temperature is always very less and this is uh, true for many countries where the temperatures are down and in the higher terrain also uh, above 3000 meter uh, height uh, we have the microorganisms or the temperatures which are less and the microorganisms are not able to degrade the waste. So, under those conditions we require cyclophilic microorganisms to be developed which can work in cold climate conditions and still work very well. So, this is the need of the hour and this is more correct for the all those uh, soldiers and the army people who are actually living in those cold climate uh, regions and they have colonies etcetera. Similarly, anaerobic digestion cyclophilic anaerobic digestion is important issue and this is so because many of the industries which are actually in the plain terrain and during the most of the time the temperature is good for mesophilic digestion to happen and under those conditions we are getting methane etcetera. But for few months 3 to 4 months the temperature goes down and all these anaerobic digestion units which are based upon the anaerobic bacteria or microorganisms they do not perform well and their efficiency goes down and the treatment does not happen we do not get any methane and other type of fuel gases. So, overall efficiency goes down. So, for these digesters we require anaerobic uh, cyclophilic anaerobic microorganisms which can work well. So, this is very important for uh, development of such things. Similarly, recycling of treated water in the domestic uses. In India we do not have any concept as such right now. Generally, the individual colonies 
uh, also do not recycle the treated water again back into the system. So, we should develop a strategy for recycling this water and also the people should accept that we need to use the recycling water, recycled water may be for flushing, may be for irrigation in the lawns etcetera. Ultimately, we will have to go for recycling the water, so that the ultimate water which is discharged as municipal waste water gets reduced. So, th this is this has to be better managed. Similarly, tertiary treatment has to be added in many of the municipal wastewater treatment plant and in maybe adsorption system, membrane systems will have to be added so that the water discharge from such STPs and ETPs into the water bodies is much better and the water bodies are not getting affected because of this water. Similarly, there are some challenges, major challenges with respect to wastewater treatment in particular for industries as well as for villages etcetera. In villages, we have lot of problems which is happening with respect to uh, drinking water like arsenic, fluoride, selenium, heavy metal, all these are coming into the uh, drinking water and we need to remove these heavy metals arsenic, fluoride, selenium etcetera, because they are causing lot of chronic problems to the villagers. So, we should uh, devise some technologies which can be installed in the villages and they should be low cost and easily operable by the villagers themselves, so that these things can be removed. Similarly, lot of nutrient get generated, nutrients uh, get generated and they go into the water and ultimately eutrophication of the lakes and reservoirs is happening and because of which these lakes are dying out and ultimately the water carrying capacity within the village gets reduced. So, we will have to devise strategies for nutrient removal from the villages as well. Similarly, we have lot of small industries and now these small industries generally they do not want to incur much money on the treatment. So, we need to develop batch treatment processes which are small in size, which should be economical in nature and that can be installed by these small industries, so that the water treatment happens. So, uh, this and remember th these industries have very small space, so they have to be small in size, then only they will be used by these industries. Similarly, for large industries, a new type of treatment methods such as sequential batch reactor, electrochemical methods etcetera have to be developed and they have to be merged together with the traditional biological treatment methods, so that the overall efficiency of biological treatment method improves along with these new treatment methods. So, this is the need of the hour. Now, uh, going uh, lastly, uh, we will try to understand what is the outline of the course and what we are going to study in this course. So, the course uh, you know very well that this is biological process design for wastewater treatment. Already uh, myself have delivered a course on physico chemical treatment of wastewater. So, overall treatment includes physico chemical as well as biological treatment. So, this course will only focus on biological process design for wastewater treatment or biological treatment of wastewater. It will not focus much on the physico chemical treatment of wastewater. If you want to study that, you will have to the study the other course on physico chemical treatment of water. Now, this course has been divided into various sections. So, one of the first section is biological treatment fundamentals. We will study regarding little bit of microbiology ecology, fundamentals of biochemical operations, conversion processes etcetera. Similarly, the second unit is related to modeling of biological treatment processes including stoichiometry, reaction, bacterial growth kinetics, reaction, reactor hydraulics, some mass and heat balance things. Uh, and then the third unit, the third week will be focused on aeration and sedimentation because they have some biological aspects involved. So, classification of biological treatment processes including nitrification, denitrification and phosphorus removal 
using biological microorganisms. Then we will go further and study the aerobic and anaerobic biological treatment processes including aerated lagoon, activated sludge system, tinklic filter, rotating disc reactors etcetera. Then we will further study anaerobic biological treatment processes including USB reactor, hybrid USB reactors, bio towers etcetera. Uh, lastly, we will study the advanced biological wastewater treatment methods including of uh, fluidized bed bioreactors, membrane bioreactors, moving bed biofilm reactor and biological nitrogen removal. After that, uh, because all these processes biological processes generate lot of sludge. So, sludge management essentially becomes part of biological process design. So, we will study regarding the sludge characteristics, its production uh, and stabilization, thickening, dewatering, pathogen removal from sludge and ultimately sludge transformation and disposal. And lastly, we will uh, do some studies or understanding of sustainability in wastewater treatment plant design. So, in this aspect, uh, we will try to focus on how to design a wastewater treatment plant which is having sustainability aspects. Uh, those include lower energy and chemical consumption okay, and uh, minimum gas generation. So, this is there and uh, we will lastly uh, study some cases of treatment of industrial wastewater in those industries where biological treatment is more dominant. So, uh, we will end with this last section. There are some books which are listed here uh, and uh, which I uh, will be using in this course. So, you can study any of these books and you can always refer to these books and uh, I think thank you very much.